Here we go with a cup winners edition of a pod full of saints, number 37 for the season. Hart Senior Cup winners after 19 long years at East St. Albans City. Anyway, we shall come on to that later. With myself, David Tavner, with the ever bubbling but rarely seen at games, Jake Ellicott. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Champions. And uh, one man who was there on Tuesday, soaking up the atmosphere at Topfield Hitchin, Lee Wood. Good evening, boys. Good evening, everyone. How the devil are we? Campiones. That's all I can say to that. Champions. We'll run through that later in our magnificent run to the final and uh, all the teams we thrashed on the way. But before that, we have a league game to look back on. Last Saturday at Clarence Park, the Saints entertained Chippenham Town. Uh, looking to complete the double we were over them for the first time. We managed to blow it quite spectacularly. Um, a 1-0 win for Chippenham. They got a goal up and everybody in the town, Chippenham, town of Chippenham even, got behind the ball and wouldn't let us have a shot. Uh, big screen for a penalty. We'll come on to that later. Um, well, did we do enough to get a, a, any more out of the game? Obviously, statistically, we didn't. But did you think on the day was anything more we could have done? Score a goal would have been nice. Have a shot would be even better. This is where we are with it, though, Tabs. You know, you said there that Chippenham, you know, didn't let us in, but we got to take our chances. We just didn't have a shot at goal. It's it was infuriating. It was we were pedestrian. You know, we had lots of endeavour. We had lots of sort of purpose. We had lots of the ball, and Chippenham were quite happy for us to have quite a lot of the ball, knowing that when we had a, a shot at goal we just pass it sideways again and try and pull them open and, and try and break them down. Sometimes there's something to be said about just having a crack at goal because with so many bodies, it could ricochet, it could deflect, it could whatever, you know. But the thing is, Jake, how many times have we come away from that park, mate, and we've gone to the pub and we're almost dreading sort of talking about the game because it's the same old, same old city. How many times are we going to let ourselves down? given these situations. Tavs, there are people around us, mate. Just shoot. For Christ's sake, shoot. You know, it's all this fancy sort of having one touch too many. It's having five touches too many, especially when we're continually chasing the game. You know, you can't fault the fact that we were on top. We were by far the better team in, in terms of football and the possession. But even then, you know, what do we do with it? Nothing, really. And it was infuriating because our, our season, and yet again, is petering out into insignificance. What did you make of it, Saturday, Jake? Yeah, I mean, I was hoping we would just skip to the final, to be honest. Um, yeah, Saturday was a really painful experience. We talked about last week, didn't we, that our fears for going into this final running was that the games were at home, actually, at Clarence Park, somewhere we haven't seen us play a lot brilliantly this season at times. And unfortunately, it proved that way, didn't it? We had a lot of the ball, like Lee said, but at times, it was just laborious, wasn't it? It was sluggish, it was slow, it was really disappointing. You know, it didn't feel like it was a team that was that was chasing a result to try and keep its playoff hopes alive at all, really, to be honest. You know, get shots away, we didn't do that at all. The shots that we did have, and unfortunately, again, one fell to Jake Berger, who I think it's fair to say hasn't particularly got much of an eye for goal in the last few weeks. He's last, I think, Avely, Slough, and today, and uh, not today, and Saturday against Chippenham, three games where he's had shots that he probably could have scored with and he didn't. And then, as you say, it was just, uh, you talk about stats, so I don't want to know what they say. You know, lots of the ball, but it was just so disappointing, wasn't it? It was really flat. Once they went ahead, even the manner that they went ahead, it was a really poor goal to concede. Another set piece, which seems to have been a bit of our un undoing in recent weeks. And then just... After that, there just didn't seem to be much of a fight, really. A lot of the ball, but it just, just didn't work for me at all. John Meeks did concede that um, we didn't get the ball into the box enough. We, let's sort out these blooming corners for a start. Let's stop doing uh -huh. this. Tip, tip tapping around. So many supporters are complaining about it. They don't like it because more often than not, it doesn't even end up with a bo ball in the box, let alone a shot. And we're just denying ourselves goal-scoring opportunities. And so that's one area where we could get the ball into a box more. Sort out the free kicks. People have taken the free kicks this season. Apart from Jeffers, we haven't got a clue. We barely get over the first, rarely get over the first man, rarely find a city man in the box. Um, our free kicks are awful. Um, whether they work on them in training or not, I don't know. But if they do, 
Uh, it's probably because our defend against our defenders that they work. They're not working in matches. Um, well, well, the manager keeps complaining. We let goals in from set pieces. So it must be true. Um, but you get my drift anyway. Um, well, what about this ridiculous handball situation? Um, everybody on the main stand side of the pitch, manager, everybody, media team, jo- Johnny uh, doing his commentary. Uh, I don't think he's finished yet. He's so perplexed a penalty wasn't given. Because uh, now we're, we're such in our desperation. We're screaming for penalties when a, a defender heads the ball out for a corner. But you two were both behind the goal. You were close to it. What did you make of it? Right. So what I've seen your photo taken under your hood from about 80 yards away. <laughs> and from that one image, you're absolutely adamant there is no handball. I have to say, I was behind the goal and I thought it was handball. All the players mm-hmm. thought it was handball. Everyone around us thought it was handball. It happened so quick and appreciative that, you know, it's a matter of telling the difference between an opposition player and our own players and whether they've used their head or their hands. But in the cold light of day, at that moment, I thought it was a handball. The players were absolutely losing their shit. They were going up to the referee to suggesting the exact same thing. So I've not seen the highlights because it was painful enough the first time around, fellas. So I apologise for that. I mean, I don't, have you seen the highlights? Was it a handball? Was it? What you it should have done, Lee, what you should yeah. have done, not look at that photo, which was a steal from my video. You should have downloaded a video, which I sent you, which yeah. shows the video. And the guy, he's gone up with his arms just to get elevation. And his arms are down here by the time he heads the ball away. The player with a hand closest to the ball, and still nowhere near it, is uh, Ibi Akambi, who's gone up for the header as well. Um, it was absolutely nonsense. But what annoys me about it is the abuse that the referee got from, from you lot behind the goal. Yeah. Um, but, but from the players, and at the final whistle, uh, Meeks came up to him talking about it, doing this, and Harry Wheeler as well. Even Michael Johnson was down the other end of the pitch. Uh, if they've seen the truth... Uh, had no, con- no, no chance of being a penalty. I hope they've been big enough to apologise to the referee during the week because it doesn't look good on the club doing that but when it's such a ridiculous thing. But um, anyway, uh, we haven't had your opinion on it, Jake. <laughs> to be fair, at the time behind the goal, I was like, that's not handball, is it? Just because everyone just went absolutely ballistic. But then everyone went up for something. And I would just love to relive that back and just see what it was because... Watching the highlights, it just doesn't look like a handball at all, does it, from from the main highlights? Um, and I actually thought there was probably more of a penalty shout when Ibia Kambi sort of got a massive shove on the in the back when he was running across the box, um, which I thought was, you know, much more of a penalty. But unfortunately, Ibi stayed up on his feet, which probably didn't help his cause, actually, ironically. Um, but yeah, watching it back, it's not a penalty, is it? But it is very unusual. They're literally almost everyone in the ground, apart from I think, you, Dave. <laughs> And one or two others just yeah. went absolutely ballistic over that penalty shout. But can I, can I just and... say, sorry, yeah, Tom, I was just going to say, it shouldn't have even got to that stage. No, it no. shouldn't have even got to that stage. Mm. We had chances and we had possession to put this game to bed and we haven't. I mean, we're going to get on to whether we've got strength and depth afterwards. But the thing is, it shouldn't even get anywhere near this, boys. Seriously. And I know that Chip and them are sort of flirting with, with the playoffs and they're obviously not a bad side. You know, they work incredibly hard for e- each other. That is a absolute fact. But we're, we are harping our, our chances on a possible handball. And the fact is, no one's had a shot on target for bloody ages. So we can't, we've got no one to blame apart from ourselves. The referee wasn't uh, the greatest. I, I agree. He didn't need to get the amount of abuse that he did get. But, you know, no one helped themselves. And just a lighter note, the last time I downloaded a video from you, D Taverner. I had MI5 knocking at my door at half past five in the morning, <laughs> mate. So there's probably a damn good bloody reason for that, fella. We, we opened this edition of uh, Pop for the Saints actually with um, one chance where we almost scored. Sam Brown's header was superbly knocked off a line by the defender. And then I'm sh- I put also on the, the slow motion of that handball so everybody can see uh, how ridiculous it is. Um, but, but a couple of other things, though. Um, Joe Partington, player of the season, obviously. We'll discuss that later. Um, Mm -hmm. I just feel last few games, he started walking the ball out of defence again and standing on it and and then walking. We need momentum. And I just don't think it's working in our favour. It shows composure and all that sort of stuff, whatever you want. But what are the other players meant to do when we're not moving the ball that freely? You're trying to open chipping them up. They must love it when we're going at half pace like that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Joe? 
size 10, mate. Don't forget, buddy. Um, but in all fairness, it was very easy to play against, weren't we? We were very easy to play against. And they just sat back and they knew it was going to go from one side of the pitch to the other. Maybe you cut in tight for the final third. But no one was making that run. I think Zane is absolutely being wasted out on the wide. He needs to be more central, more focused in the middle of the park there. What can you do? You know, we haven't got it right. We haven't got it right for about a month now. And it's we're just, you know, we're leaking silly goals. We're making silly mistakes. We're not really imposing ourselves upon teams. Jake, you're absolutely spot on, buddy. You know, we're better off just playing the whole of next season away from home because we seem to get a little bit more impetus there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just bewildering how bad we are at home and we let these teams just just turn up and take three points from us, like, at random. The gate was hugely down on a previous home game. Um, whether there's any significance in that, I don't know. Um, but uh, that was our 10th home league defeat of the season. It was it only 11th or 12th time in our history. We've lost that many home games. Four of them would have been relegation seasons. One of them wasn't because Leighton Stone Ilford merged and that saved us from relegation. But that just shows how poor we have been at home. And we've got these mega crowds. And like we mentioned last week, we just don't intimidate size when we play at Clowns Park. We've, we've got to change the way we play next season because this season isn't working. I, th- I think it's a testament to the crowds themselves and the club to an extent for getting these great crowds in, even mm-hmm. when the football at home hasn't been particularly amazing. But when you look, think of that stat, it makes you think that we probably are a team that doesn't deserve to make the playoffs. Arguably, if you're losing 10, 11 odd games at home this season, and with the games you've got coming up, it could be what 12 games by the by the end of the season with two tough home games. You know, you don't deserve it, do you? So it's going to be difficult. On that Joe Partington point, I thought most of the team slowed the book game down at times on Saturday. It wasn't just Joe. I think you know everyone apart from maybe Ryan Blackman. But then you know maybe we'll come on to the team selection. But that Ryan Blackman was playing centre half for most of the game. Yeah, um, was it Ryan got man of the match? As somebody around me noted, uh, he hadn't had anything to do because uh, he was standing on the halfway line patrolling that and uh, Chippen had no attention up in the second half again then went near the halfway line. It felt a real waste for him to be there, I thought, that second half especially. At Slough, we saw he was the most influential and most impactful player we had come off the bench there, played a part in that turnaround. And on Saturday, I could see what Meeks was doing in terms of, oh, he talked about it in his interview, didn't he? The way Chippenham sat back, it almost was one at a back at times for us. But that last, you know, 15, 20 minutes, I think at times it was Joe Partington and other defenders making runs into the box or trying to influence the play on the edge of the box. Why haven't you got Ryan Blackman a bit further forward to try and engage the game a bit more, find that incisive ball? We saw he could do that at Slough with that great ball in that probably didn't take a touch and probably was his goal. We didn't do enough of that, did we, really, on Saturday? And again, you just wonder, could Ryan have possibly influenced it a bit more if we'd just been willing to push him forward a bit more? You mentioned about team selection, Jake. Obviously, something has irked you. Go on, then. Well, it was Ryan Blackman mainly being oh, stuck there, sorry. but also a surprise inclusion of uh, everyone's favourite striker, Ibi Akambi. I don't think any of us saw that coming, did we? <laughs> before, before the game. And... I don't know. It was an experiment for me that didn't really work. What do you guys think? It was a surprise recall. A few weeks ago, it wasn't good enough for him. We shifted him out to Dartford. Um, obviously, yeah, that's worked well. They're about to go down. And now he's back with us. And, um, mm. yeah, surprised to see him in there. I, I've actually got time for him. Maybe, but yeah. um, mm. more on the bench. I think he's someone we could bring on late in game, which isn't fair on him, which is a waste of uh, his time. But, um, in the starting appearance in a big game like that, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right to query that one. I thought he looked like maybe a player that hadn't really been involved with us for what going on for two months nearly now. And I suppose part of it's brought about because we understand that Mitch Vice was unavailable, wasn't he? Um, so he couldn't feature. So I guess if he was drafted in. Um, but yeah, for the team again, the balance, like Lee says, Zane Banton stuck out wide. It just didn't, none of it really worked at all. Yeah. Chiffenham, it was almost like when Torquay came to the park at the start of the season they got a goal ahead and uh, that was it they just shut up shop and uh, shut us out comfortably uh, we, we've got to mix and match the way we play somehow but um, there we go we're not managing it's not our problem <laughs> <laughs> right Chiffenham with that uh, result and had they won Tuesday they could have gone level on points with us and 
therefore remained in the hunt for the playoffs, but uh, they blew a 1-0 lead at Western Supermare Tuesday, and they are now out of a hunt. Um, one suspects we might be going the same way uh, soon. But will come on to that in a minute. Right, before that, we have got a glory night. Um, I thought it was Paul Bastog. He's my neighbour. He's got the same problem. Um, a glory night over at Topfield Hitchin. Burke Hampstead beating 4-2. Hearts Senior Cup final. Great game, wasn't it, Lee? It actually was, I thought. Yeah, it was a good game, mate. It was uh, entertaining. Um, it was very much, in every sense of the phrase, it, it was Burko's Cup final. Um, they came to play. Uh, I think we were, I think we our, our lack of respect towards them at the end of last week's pod suggested it was going to be a lot easier than what it was. Um yeah, we changed the we changed the team around a, a little bit as you would expect. I think four two flatters us. Cool. If I'm honest, immensely. Yeah, yeah. What I would say there was a I don't know. It was there was a bit where Burko. I think they just tired. I think I I don't think we were bad. I think we tried to play football the right way. We tried to play it in the key areas. I know Mitch, uh, Aidan Francis Clark on that left hand side. Try to get something going. Um, you know, it was good. You know, there were some nice touches. They try to get the ball out quickly wide and try and stretch Burko, whose season, let's face it, they were probably relegated by by Christmas, if I'm honest. But they didn't look like that, that, that sort of team on Tuesday night. They looked strong. They looked tough. They were going to fight. And they had some key players out themselves as well. So for them to put the showing in that they did was massive, massive credit. And I think just at the end of the day, that little tiny bit of quality um, shone through. But I tell you what, it wasn't convincing by any stretch. I, d I didn't see that little bit of quality. I, I would say in the second half, we had a better mm. control of the game, if you like. We were able to play some of our football. But the first half, they tore us to shreds. Uh, mm. Max Bustamante, I've probably got that completely wrong. He scored one goal, ran close with several others. In the second half, he missed a couple of good chances. They should have been out of sight in the first half. Well, our goals, what were we? A ludicrous own goal. Anybody who says it's Mitchell Weiss's goal, forget it. He, he was as better close to it as you were, Jake, and you were under the thumb somewhere. And, um, <laughs> and, and the second goal, second goal right on half time was a penalty. Um, we should have been three down at half time. We couldn't have complained had we been. And the second half, yes, we did come more into it. It's good to see Callum Tripp banging a couple of goals, his first mm. for the club. But after a good start, I thought he actually struggled defensively because we were woeful at the back throughout most of the game. And for me, the man of the match, without a shadow of a doubt from our point of view, Sam Bentley. Hey, it's been a while since we've had one of these. <laughs> I kid you I kid you not, Jacob. Listen, mate, every ball that they put into our box caused absolute bedlam. Mm. It was mm. chaotic. It was off the line. It was last ditch tackles. It was head tennis across our six yard box. Every single ball they put in our box, we shat ourselves. We were out of position. We were facing the wrong way. Mate, I'm telling you, I promise you now, every ball, they knew what they were doing. And that's why they kept doing it. Because it was just pumping it, pumping it in. And we could not deal with it. No one got a grasp of the situation. We let Burkhamsey just literally have the ball. We gave it the ball back away from the... Oh, it was just... I turned to Ian Rogers in that second half and thank God we had that little bit of a cushion. And as soon as he went to 4-2, I thought, thank God for that. And you can see people around us, that massive sigh of relief because 4-2, that late in the game, you couldn't see Burkhamsey coming back. But I'll tell you what, Tasma, you're absolutely spot on. I don't think I could have left there at half time, thinking if we were three or four, four nil down even. How many times we had shots off of the line, they hit the post. Okay, we hit the post, but Mate, it was a shambolic defensive performance. But what I would say to this, right, is that do we expect these fringe players to come in and do a comparable job to those in the first team setup? Of course not. However, it was so disorganised, it was, it was borderline embarrassing. Well, you look at um, how we've won this cup. Um, we have, first of all, uh, Hitchin, they were on an unbelievable losing run. What did they lose? Something like 14 in a row, wasn't it? And they won and uh, when they went back started losing again. But, but they just in their players, so they had chronic injuries. So we beat them. Then Stevenage under 18s. Stevenage made no bones about it, <laughs> very goodly, on their website. Um, 
printed Stevenage under 18s. Then Hartford in the semi final, Hartford Town. And then Burko, already relegated in the final. Yeah, we've won it, but uh, we haven't exactly covered ourselves in glory. You can only beat what's put in front of it. We all know that. And uh, that is what we've done. Um, and I think in the record books we show we won it. First time in 19 years, of course. Did you, would you say, I mean, the fact is, it, it has been so long. Maybe we've been a, a little bit harsh on the on the fellas. Did they show enough character and a, a, and enough control at the key area, especially in the second half, to warrant the win? Because the fact is, first half they should have been, we should have been absolutely dead and buried, but we weren't. You know, maybe those last ditch tackles, maybe those they, you know those saves of the diving headers. You know, maybe we've got to put a little bit of character praise back on our boys because it, Burko made a hell of a fight of it. And we still came out on top. So maybe that says a little bit about our fringe players, possibly. Of course it does, Lee. Right behind you on that one. We were lucky. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Right. Um, before the game, you and I were talking to a supporter um, who said, is it a good season if we win both the Hertfordshire competitions uh, and finish round about the playoffs, just outside the playoffs? Um, does that constitute a good season. We'll let you go first for this one, Jake. Ah, oh, silverware, of course. I mean, you know, we've got to take that. I think not getting in the playoffs would be, well, it's a real mix, isn't it? Start of the season, we did, we, well, we were worried more about finishing bottom half, weren't we? And uh, then second half of the season since Christmas, really, you know, we've been on pace for the playoffs, haven't we? And arguably, we've thrown it away at the minute. I know we could still mathematically get in there, um, unlikely at the minute. We are throwing it away, but then winning the silverware. Dave, how many, you know, we've been doing this podcast for too many years now. And every season we talked about, didn't we, winning the winning the county cups. It actually does mean something. So I suppose, it. I guess, it would be a success in that sense. You know, if we finish a couple points off the playoffs, win those, that'd be nice. But, you know, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the playoff position is, and situation is, you know, it's not great, is it, if we don't. Get it. Well, how important is a Hart Senior Cup to a club? We had heard several interviews recently when Hart Senior Cup was overlooked in the interviews. They go on to talking about next Saturday's game, ignoring the midweek game. We did it in both the two previous rounds. You go to the programmes and the list of fixtures in there. Half a year competitions don't even appear on that. The club don't give a monkeys. And was the game filmed on Tuesday? Can't see any highlights. I think we are operating in a different time now where you and I, Tabs, would, would sort of, you know, look upon the, the County Cup um, ties as, you know, a really good option for a little bit of success in correlation with our, our league campaign. I think, you're, I think you are right, and this will upset quite a few people. The club don't give a shit about this sort of games. They honestly don't. They honestly don't. And I will argue with anyone who comes up to us and we'll have a, a polite conversation about it. But I don't mind that. That's not a bad thing, because I think what what progression have we made in the last five years if we're not consistently challenging for the playoffs? We're not only challenging for playoffs, being in the playoffs. This season hasn't panned out with, you know, a plethora of runaway teams. We, we should have been good enough to be in the playoffs comfortably we've thrown games away um admittedly the first half of the season was just an absolute you know catastrophe really the way we played and the whole managerial situation we've got going on Jeffers Gate call it whatever you will it's only really once Meek has sort of come in and took the latter echelons of Noble's reign where we really showed some promise for the last month Someone behind us said it uh, fantastically well on Saturday. What a time for our team to capitulate. The key players who you looked upon to really, really sort of get us over that line, non-existent. And I think this does coincide with the players that aren't there more than the players that are. So, Georgie Hoddle, you know, he's been instrumental in our season today. I think it, it's no coincidence that as soon as he left, um, things have fallen away. You mentioned David Noble there, really. Lee. Uh, he walked out on us mid-season. You can't blame me. He had a better offer, you could say, uh, National League. Um, 
but you know, still leaves a nasty taste of putting the club mates through him. He lasted just 10 weeks at Wildstone. Mm. Few supporters are asking, do we take him back? And I'd like to know what you, your views of you two on that. And also, if he does come back then, what role does he have? Well, I think if he came back, he'd probably be manager, wouldn't he? I think that'd be the first one. I don't think he'd take anything less. But um, like Lee says, I think if we don't get the playoffs, and this links to the David Noble question, I think there's two reasons. First of all is George Hoddle being recalled by Cambridge to only get injured in his first training session and not play for him. And that's a real shame for George and that that's happened. And it's obviously nothing to do with him. And he's a massive loss. He's been brilliant. And the second of all, I genuinely think is Sean Jeffers being sat on the bench for three months at the start of the season. I know we'd like we like to joke about it, didn't we, in recent weeks and recent months about, oh, he's quite good at running around, isn't he? And quite good at scoring goals. But, you know, if you had him on the pitch, you do wonder how many more points we might have picked up. Might not have been lots. Might have only been a couple more. I can think of at least a Torquay game that I think we probably would have picked a point from potentially if he played that in pre-season. He didn't play in pre-season at all. And I'm that leads to me into thinking that, would we want David Noble back? You know, his arrogance or whatever it was, his decision over Sean Jeffers, that has cost us, you know, points, I think, this season, unfortunately. Of course, he brought Sean back into the fold. We even saw it the hemel away, didn't we? We were 2-0 down till Sean, Sean Jeffers was brought on and started to feature. There's all that, all that. So I think, for me, I don't know if I'd want David Noble back purely because of that, that history around those issues that we've had. Go along with those, Lee. Absolutely. They say never go back. And I I say this with the utmost love and adoration and respect for David Noble, the player. I don't want him any back anywhere near our club, purely because his his time as manager, the first when he took over that interim manager, it was amazing. The football that we that we played was revolutionary. You know, we hadn't seen that sort of thing down at the park for quite some sort of time. And I think once he got his feet under the table, I think he tried to double guess himself. I think that's where he slipped up a little bit. His handling of the Jeffers situation was absolutely shambolic. And I think Jake used the word there, arrogance. And I think that's probably spot on because he didn't really, you know, he was very, he was very sort of uh, insular, very sort of coy, very sort of uh, quietly spoken. Um, That said, there was no real explanation really. You know, we were hearing murmurings all over the place. I've got a question here from from Andy, um, actually, who emailed the, the podcast. Big fan of the pod. Thank you very much, my friend. We appreciate all of the support. He said, I've been meaning to ask this question for a while, and perhaps all the more relevant now that Noble has been sacked from Wildstone. Did, did anything come from the compensation uh, that is supposedly owed or discussed when Wildstone first hired Noble? I don't know if this was ever, ever clarified at the recent fans forum. Now, I think the fact that he's gone, I spoke to another non-league manager uh, who's part of the same sort of chat the other managers are sort of part of. And it's no surprise the fact that Willstone owed David Noble quite a lot of money. In fact, he signed a two and a half year deal. But as soon as David Noble signs for another club as manager or coach, whatever, that money stops. So if I was David Noble, I'd be better off spending the next year actually getting my coaching badges, Um, you know, maybe absorbing some sort of charisma in the process along with that majestic footballing style that he has which he has no no doubt about it and then hit hit the ground running in like a year's time um the fact is tabs you're gonna know better than i mate with your with your uh your contacts and your secret uh, discussions with managers so um i'll let you take this one mate well i'll go along with you nobby is a player and I wanted to say this anyway. Um, we enjoyed it so much. We were so thankful we had the chance to see him. We enjoyed mm. it. Wonderful. Nobby as a manager, I wouldn't give quite the, the, the praise that you did during his interim period. He did really well. He did no doubt about that whatsoever. I'm not sure it was the greatest football we've seen for a long time, but it but it was good. He did well. Um, thereafter, no, I, I would not take him back in any way, shape or form. Um, the football under him, it was just so boring. It was negative. Not having Sean up front was a big mistake. It, it should have relented earlier and brought Sean back in. Everybody knows that. Um, but we hear similar things happened at Wheelstone, where he's left one or two of the top players out, apparently. Um, I haven't followed it that closely, so I assume that's true. Um, so you think, no, don't don't want that. Um, so we go with what we've got and go forward 
with a new manager or if we need one or whatever at Florence Park. But David Noble, no, I don't see him coming back. Um, compensation, did we ever get it? Well, apparently the club never sent his uh, contract into the FA, so uh, he wasn't under contract, apparently. And if that is so, then Wheelstone have to pay us no compensation whatsoever. Whether it ever happened or not, we don't know. The club will never say, of course. Um, so we just keep guessing on that one. I think it's, it's fair to say, isn't it, that none of us are bitter about him him leaving. I think all of us understood yeah. at the team what time, why. And like you've all said, you know, I loved him as a player. I thought he, he gave us great memories as a manager. Got off to a playoff final. Not many managers have done that for us. Mm. So fair enough, brilliant. You know, but it is... It's funny, isn't it, to see to see it happen after ten weeks? I think all of us. I thought, you know, we thought it would be difficult, but I don't think we thought he'd find it this difficult at Wildstone. Um, it's been quite the learning curve for him, um, I suspect. And you just wonder if he if he regrets that decision. But we've we've got to look forward, haven't we? We can't keep looking back and thinking about managers that have done brilliant jobs for us previously and how that happened. You know, it's happened before with us. We've brought back managers that have done de- reasonable jobs for us before. It never seems to quite work out again. So I don't think now would be the time to do it. But can I just say, oh, though, fellas, sorry, can, can I just say, why didn't you, why didn't he think it was going to be a hard task? Wildstone fans, what they lack in, in, in grey matter, they certainly make up for in passion, raw, raw passion. So, and they're pretty unforgiving, right? So what, what, what made him think it was going to be anything other than that difficult? You know, they they were they were mid table, but they weren't the sort of team where they would quickly adopt his way of thinking and his way of playing football. Did he? Was he naive enough? Was he arrogant enough to think he was just going to go in there, wipe the slate clean, and they're going to hit the ground running and head off into the higher echelons of the national league? No. He should have looked at the players. He left us, which I've got no problem with because people always try and better their careers. No major issue with that. But he should have done his due diligence enough to know that it wasn't a footballing side he was going to. And that he was he was the preacher of all good things passing football, wasn't he? You know? And Wildstone, you're not really going to get that. They're more a grit determination, get in your face, more direct style of play. And I like Nobby, but I don't think he's as good as maybe he thought he was in that particular situation, in that he was going to go to this team, rejuvenate the entire club and turn it around. Um, and, it, and it proved to be that. And I think, you know, there was a little bit of the fact where he got on a bad run. And it, listen, I don't think, I can't think of too many clubs where the fans, their voice has so much sort of resonation between them and the board. I think Wilson is definitely one of those. And he, But he should have known that. He should have known that. I was speaking to a fan on Tuesday night and he, you know, we were talking about this and someone, this is going to be controversial, but it's in context with what we're sort of talking about. Do you think the club rushed in with getting Mixie on board straight away? Um, right. They felt, go on. Yeah, go on, Tess. No, sorry, Lee, I thought you finished. I didn't mean by no, um, no, no, Will Stone, um, when they appointed Nobby, they said his footballing philosophy is what they like and it agrees with the way they already play. Um, whether that's so or not, I don't know. But that's what, what they claimed and he would fit uh, what they wanted ideally. Um, whether it came like that or came more negative, as we saw at Clarence Park or not, we don't know. Um, Meeks, are you getting on to there? He's now had 15 games as manager. When Ian Anderson came in, he came in for those final 15 games that season. A certain relegation, we're hardly picking up a point. From those 15 games, uh, Ian picked up 27 points. Um, David Noble, in his 15 games, picked up 30 points. Uh, John Meeks has picked up 20, a lot lower. Uh, and in fact, the only manager with the worst record in the last, what, getting on for 10 years almost, was uh, Harry Wheeler, who... Uh, made way for Ian after collecting just nine points from his 10 games as manager. Um, so if you're going to base it on statistics, John Meeks is under pressure. Do you see it like that? I don't. No, I don't. I think Meeks, he come in. I think it, it was the correct choice to put him in charge. I think the common sense should have prevailed and said, right, Meeks, he got to the end of the summer, mate. You know, let's, let's see what you got. Uh, and the thing is, 
we know St Albans are always going to be attracting managers at, at the non-league level. No doubt about it. I I would love Meeksy to crack on now because I think and really make this team his own. Um, I think the summer is going to is is going to be telling. I think the recruitment process has to be strong because if you look at where Noble's success ended is when we we basically got rid of our two marauding fullbacks. We didn't really replace them, but he still tried to maintain that same style. Um, I think Meeks, he needs to recruit well. The club need to give him the ammunition to do that as well. And I think I don't want to get to the situation where we've got to like the autumn time, October, and Meeks, he finds himself in the exact same situation that David Noble was this time last year. So I think we've got to stick with Meeksy. I want us to stick with Meeksy. I love Meeksy. I love the way he he his commitment to the game. Um, but look, the fact is we're going to get back onto David Noble. Will we have him back? No. But the thing is, I think this should be testament to him is that he was wanted by a higher club. Um, I just think he he should have chose it a lot better because if he'd have stayed with City, um, there could have been further progression in in his career. You know, who knows where we could have been? But ultimately, it's an interesting point because what what is what does he do now? I mean, Jake, we all followed his demise at Wildstone um, with great interest because it was sad for Nobby. It was sad for Nobby because we always see Nobby as the player as opposed to the manager, really in a heart of hearts. Um, and don't get me wrong, I would love to see Wildstone go down. Absolutely. Chuck on my, chuck on my way through that. But, you know, um, it's a sad time. And But it's a performance business. And Meeks, you need to start getting some. Um, otherwise, there's, there was a few calls on Tuesday. Not calls, but there was a few doubts in the head setting in from the supporters around us. But I think we've got to take it all into context. Meeks is under... <sighs> He's under no illusions at the task at hand, and we've just got to give him the right platform now to take his team into next season. Yeah, whoever City manager, you want them to succeed, and I'd love to see John Meeks succeed. But I was always wary when the appointment was made. I, I, he made a great start, and we were playing good football. So you mm. don't understand why they gave it to him. But I just look at his career; he hasn't been at this level really. Not certainly not as a manager. He's got no experience at this level. Um, he's been assistant manager here for a while. He's managed at a lower level. And I just, just wondered, could they have left it till the end of the season? Say, yeah, John, we'll give you all these games at the end of the season. Let's see how you get on. And then we'll sit down and chat. Um, I don't want him to fail. I'd love to see him succeed. But um, yeah. he, he needs a good run in from his last three games. Sorry, Jake. I, was, uh, I think a lot of people would have said similar things about David Noble, to be fair, when we appointed him not long ago. They similar concerns around it. And he, he did find his feet. You know, I said Meeksy did start really when I thought he was the right appointment. I still think he is. I think, you know, talk of is he wrong now? I think it would just be pointless to change manager in the summer. I think at this stage, you've got to give him time to, as Lee said, build a team that he wants, build those players in. But it's going to be a, a very interesting summer. I think we saw more turnover of players than we expected probably last summer. And I think we will see quite a bit of turnover of players this summer. And of course, you've got some players that, you know, who have been here for a while or big names that you just wonder will they be here next next mm. season? So a very big challenge coming up. And you know, we could still make the playoffs. We haven't totally ruled it out, but well, you know, that Jake, haven't you good... got yeah. haven't you got an email about the squad? Yes, yes. We had um a listener and viewer by the name of Aaron, I'm sure many know who I mean, uh contact um us today. And he saw the cup final. He was just saying that, you know, maybe those players that have come in or at least on the edges of the squad, maybe they're not quite good enough, really, to be giving us a squad depth and ability and in games that need changing. I think probably we've seen that in recent weeks, actually, apart from Blackman's impact at Slough. And also those bigger games as well. If we were, if we did somehow make to the playoffs, do we have those sort of players that could come in off the bench and make those change those games? Um, be interested to know what you two think. Uh, well, uh message I've had from someone said uh, what do we do this summer? Do we build a squad and we do it or do we blow all the budget on one player Sean Jeffers again? Um because we don't <laughs> know what the situation is. Don't know what the situation with him is. Um we were told in waiting for him to be offered a new contract after playing a certain number of games, really must have played that number of games. So one assumes if that's true he will have been offered a contract. But uh 
we don't know. Do, do you blow it on trying to keep him or do you try and build a stronger squad? And on that subject, actually, I've received a message from someone. list of things which are quite eye-opening. And one of them on there, I said, I won't mention the others, just this one. Uh, talks about big investment coming into the club uh, next season or in the summer. Oh, Beyond be that, I have no more details. Hmm. That would be great if it goes into the budget. I don't think we'd mind, would we? Um, I think, you know, talk about blowing the budget on one player and then not necessarily strengthen the rest of the squad. I think we saw last season you can have someone like Sean Jeffers and have a strong squad around him. You've just got to spend the money on the right players and spend it wisely. Um, and I think that's possible. But again, a lot of that is down to the manager, isn't it? Getting those players in, building a squad that can do it. Maybe relying on, on the nasty loan system that, you know, Dave, we know you're not always a fan of. But, if, you know, if you... Let's look at George Hoddle this season. What an impact he's had. Um, and similar with Glenn McConnell, Shea Cooper last season. <coughs> These players... You know, and what happens... Oh, sorry, Jake. Glenn Hoddle... Uh, yeah, Glenn Hoddle? Glenn Hoddle. Might Hoddle. Can have him as well. George Hoddle gets recalled by his club. And, we, and we're seeing what happens now because we haven't beat our yeah. own team. It works both ways, doesn't it, unfortunately? Yeah. Absolutely does. Um, you are right. But I think we can build that squad if we're wise about it. Uh, you know, but I think... You've got to have someone like Sean Jeffers, whether it's him or another striker. We've seen this season, the start of the season, you're getting nowhere if you don't score enough goals. We need someone like him. Yeah, I think we'll probably come onto the squad again uh, when the season does close. We've got other things to chew over as well. Right, last weekend, voting took place for the player of the year. You can do it online as well. I don't know if it's, oh, given it's now Thursday night, you probably can't still do it. Um, what are your thoughts, player of the year? Who would we go for? Partington, done, dusted. Good night, Amsterdam. Here we go. Right. Um, what do we do? What do we do? For me, the most influential player of the entire season who's really encapsulated the spirit of the team is Hoddle. But can can we can we vote for someone who's no longer here? Well, he's been the best player. Um Jeffers, absolutely. He's always going to be up there because, you know, the younger element of our fan base is always going to go for the geezer that scores all of the goals, and quite rightly so. Um, I mean, MJ's been, MJ's probably the best version of MJ that I've seen at the, at the club. I think he's been, when he's been fit, he's been absolutely amazing. But other than that, it's pretty slim, slim pickings. So, Cause I think we've lacked one thing is, is just consistency. Blackman's had good games. Rasulo's had a few good games. Michael Clark at the back when he's been fit, God bless him. He, he's been He's been instrumental. Joe Partington has come in. But I, I think we just lack consistency. And, and I think that's going to be our, to our detriment. I think that's that's going to be our shortcoming. Um, but for me, the one person that has shown quality, class, poise, composure, skill on a consistent basis is Hoddle. And unfortunately, he's not here. And you, Jake? I think Hoddle <coughs> is a very good shout, to be fair. I mean, apart from him, who else in the team? Even though those names are like Zane Banton that you play as those you normally look at. I said Michael Clark. Michael Johnson's probably been up there, but none of them have been consistent, have they, this season? Maybe not always through their own fault. I mean, I just remember Zane Banton. Was it? It's easy to forget Zane Banton didn't play the first few months of the season with that horrible injury that he picked up. Um, but those sort of players just haven't stood out. And as I say, Sean Jeffers, he's the easy choice, isn't he? And he probably is a good choice, you know. His finishing the season has been close range, long range, difficult goals, great build-up play, laying the ball off. He has been really, really good this season at times. And he has had a massive impact. When it would have been easy for him just to down tools and think, ah, why should I bother with this club? They've treated me like, you know, what they have this season. But he's he's impressed. But I think it's probably for me between him, him or Hoddle for the player of the season. Right, I think Joe, when he came in, uh, took two games to find his feet, but has been excellent since then. But uh, he did miss the first, what, 14 games or more of a season because he was with Farnborough. Um, I wouldn't go for him. Yes, the youngster, younger man will go for Jeffers because of his goals, no doubt about that. Uh, one I would actually go for, I would go for the goalkeeper. I know he's missed 16 games, but Michael Johnson will get my vote. Even in recent games, um, uh, Avely, all right, he should have had that free kick wheel, Phil, but he made Four other good saves in that game. We still lost. He made saves last Saturday as well. Um, he, he saved us a few, quite a few times. And uh, yes, Michael Johnson would have got my vote had I submitted one. But I came in by the uh, Hatfield Road entrance last Saturday where they weren't giving the forms out. 
You do it online though, Tabs? Or are you like a, a massive, massive technophobe that you can't even be bothered yeah. to do that? No? Don't know how to do it. Don't know how to do it, though. <laughs> right, we'll wait and see who gets it. So that'll be announced on Saturday, I believe, isn't it? We're making the uh, presentation. Um, also, we're running out of time. Yeah, um, we are. But I, I do believe that you're in the running, Tavs, for Clubman of the Year. That's what I've heard oh, in the pipeline. Me. Yeah, I picked up a load of those forms. I've been filling them in the last few days. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, unfortunately, the carrier pigeon hasn't quite taken the Clarence part. So. <laughs> I can assure you there are some people in that boardroom who will shred every single one of them. Um, anyway, yeah, beyond that, we have a game on Saturday where we can get back into contention. We're at home to Worthing, who unfortunately mm. found their form again, what, five straight wins or something, mm-hmm. after a bad run when uh, Adam Hinshelwood, another manager, walked out mid-season. But they, unlike us, have bounced back. Uh, do we fancy our chances? They are assured a playoff place now, but what they would want is to uh, get higher up to get a home draw. Um, do we fancy ourselves Saturday? That's shaking them ahead from Lee. What about you, Jake? Um, well, the games against Worthing in recent years, it's fair to say, have been emotional journeys. Um, <laughs> and Saturday could be similar. I'm hoping it's an entertaining game, whatever happens. It sh- hopefully it's a good game. But you just go into it in our form at the minute. You're just really worried now, don't you? As to these final couple of games we've got, we're not in form. We're, we're low on confidence. I think expectations, I think it's fair to say, are lower than they should be for Saturday. Yeah. Um, you really hope this time we do come out blazing. If we're going to blow out on Saturday, let's do mm. it with all guns firing and uh, not just go down tamely as we've done one or two times lately. Um, Come on, lads, let's give it a go. Right, we're going to have predictions for it. Uh, I'll go first, if you like. Uh, we're having, yes, 17 goals in the last two games. They've both been down at Woodside Road. The last one at the park was a dreadful 1-0 win for them. Um, let's turn it around. 1-0 win for the Saints. Oh, my goodness, me. <laughs> God. Um, uh, I'll go for 2-2. Two, two. Lee, definitely hush. Well... I've been criticised for my predictions of late by a couple of parties, so I'm not going to disappoint now. I'm going to go three-one worthy. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I don't know why you're criticised. I, I, I was almost right with the Chippenham score. I said they would get one goal, but we didn't get our five. Mm. Um, right, Hampton. When we went down to the Beverly early in the season on Tuesday night, uh, last twenty minutes, we absolutely pummeled them. Just couldn't score. A bit of bad feeling. Their goalkeeper. Uh, Wound a few people up. Um, they are in the playoff position. They are the ones that are bordering out on the borderline, looking to be overtaken by a couple of clubs, ourselves inclusion, included. God, I'm doing well tonight. What do we fancy for that one next Tuesday? Well, it could all be over by then, couldn't it? It might not matter, really. <laughs> really. Hampton have, what, Dover on Saturday? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you fear. You fear for that. Um, and also Farnborough are playing tonight as well, aren't they, against Taunton? So it could be Farnborough Hampton. Avely shoot out, forget about us. Um, again, it's going to be a tough one, maybe slightly here than Worthing. Hopefully, Hampton have been, they've had a wobble themselves in recent mm-hmm. weeks, haven't they, really? Um, so let's go for ah, 2 1 Saints. Lee? 1 0. Oh, I was going to go for a draw, I'll go for 2 2. Anyway, um, Final point from me on Saturday. It uh, would have been my grandmother's 116th birthday. Don't bother sending her a card. I'll accept money, though. Uh, but it's also uh, St. Albans City's 116th birthday, if you have got a spare card to send. Look so that. will we be in party mood Saturday? Um, on that note, I just want to have a quick mention to all the fans that did travel to Hitchin Town on Tuesday. They're in excess of a couple of hundred, and they were all in good voice. And what, what I thought was nice, Tabs, is the fact that um, Burko made the Burko fans, or, or, although they were small in number, they were big in heart. And I think, you know, the ones that I spoke to were very sort of gracious. Um, I thought Hitchin Town as a club, they excelled themselves again. They've always a wonderful atmosphere and we are welcomed with open arms when we go down there. But our fans were fantastic. We sung and although we were, you know, there was points where it could have got a bit snippy. Um, the atmosphere wasn't great in the first half, but we stuck by the team and we were there in numbers. And the scenes at the end when when we lifted uh, the cup were were really, really good. And um, 
well done to everyone that did make the journey down to Hitchin on Tuesday. Well said. Let's hope we uh, make it worthwhile for them on Saturday as well then. Mm. Look at this positivity. We're going to win now. Uh, on that lovely note, um, mm. we will speak to you again next week. Uh, if you have anything you want to mention or say to us or question us or anything at all, pod full of saints on Twitter, email description below, and we will speak to you again next week. So goodbye from us and come on you saints. <laughs>